Hello everybody, and welcome back to my Dwarf Fortress Beginner Let's Play. In the last ver in the last episode, uh, we covered the very basics of setting up a tavern, as well as the very basics of setting up a manager. Today we're going to be setting up a proper uh, tavern and getting kind of our kitchens and everything up and rolling. We're going to dive back into the save right now, and as always, if you have questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments section below. And of course, if you like the sound of my voice, as always, I am a Twitch streamer primarily. You can find me over at Twitch at twitch.tv slash blindirl. Advertising moments are the best things to do during loading screens, as a wise person never said. So now that we're through that, we'll simply wait for the game to finish loading up. Now that we're back into the fortress, let's just review what we have. We have a set of bedrooms. We have a stoneworker's workshop. And we have the beginnings of what's going to be our tavern and our food stockpile slash kitchens. We also have what is beginning to turn into kind of a large set of stockpiles, which we're going to need because it's Dwarf Fortress. Something else we're going to do is we're going to have to set up a crafting room today. So we're probably going to expand back here with this room and make this into a crafting room. We'll probably also expand up this way and set up more bedrooms because we still only have seven dwarves. We haven't had our first migrant wave yet which is going to happen sooner rather than later. It appears that a gray langer has stolen a minecart, which is terrifying. Absolutely horrific. It's a good thing we made lots of them. Um, we have to be careful of gray langers, which have been attacking us on the surface. Not the biggest threat as they're only monkeys, but they still can slap a dwarf around a little bit. So another thing I kind of would like to do is transfer this little set of um, temporary bedrooms from a dormitory where dwarves sleep to a temporary hospital which we're also going to get set up once these extra bedrooms are done dwarves are making good progress and things are happening one by one and something that we assigned right at the very end of yesterday is in the noble screen which can be found by this little crown down here now in this noble screen you'll see that we've set up datan here our friend as our glor who is our glorious expedition leader we've given them some extra tasks they are also a bookkeeper and a broker and as, as well as our manager. So currently, our dwarf here is updating stockpile records. This is the job of the broker. They run through everything, and as you can see up top, we now have exact numbers for everything in our inventory. It's a very important thing that dwarves need to do quite early on. Alongside of that, we have uh, access to the manager screen right now, which means I think it's time that we start getting some mugs going, because dwarves don't like drinking alcohol without mugs. That's very offensive. So we're going to open up workshops, and we're going to open up a very important workshop called the Crafts Dwarf Shop. Now, the Crafts Dwarf Shop is where dwarves make crafts, naturally. Uh, and once it is finished being constructed, we're going to queue up some mugs with the manager there. Once our dwarf here is done updating our stockpile, we're going to also have a complete list of everything in our fortress. And it's going to be very useful, and we're going to be actually able to keep track of things. Make sure that thieves don't run off with your anvil, as that is a very important thing to keep safe, especially early game. So. Things are getting done slowly, and it seems like some jobs have been cancelled. Um, cancelled make minecart. Reason interrupted by Grey Langer. Well, uh, that's unfortunate. Where's this combat happening? Once again, these Grey Langers being a bit of a pest, as per usual. Did it run into my fortress? <laughs> I, uh, hmm, hold up. Let's see. It was it was last noticed here. Not sure where it ran off to. Well, that's kind of terrifying. We're going to have to be pretty careful with these doorways. So something that I would like to point out with doors, that's very important to know, is there's two options here. We can lock the door, and we can make the door passable. If the door is locked, dwarves cannot go through it. This is something that's very important to note, especially if you've left threats on in Dwarf Fortress. Oh, there's our heartbroken, seriously injured, uh, upset little monkey here who uh, appears to be crawling off in some large amounts of pain. That's unfortunate. I hope that you make it away without us having to, you know, fight you for our minecarts again. So, well, as I was saying, if you click on doors, you can set them to not be passable. This is a very important thing to worry about when concerning yourself with enemy attacks. So let's just say a werewolf shows up, which would be very rare indeed. But if a werewolf did show up, or a were-monkey, or a were-cougar, or a were- elephants of any variety, if any of those show up, it might be wise to use a burrow and lock our dwarves behind these doors. So I'm going to jump down to here, this layer, and we are going to go to the burrows section. So we're going to establish a new burrow. We don't need to worry about the silly tutorial. Add new burrow right here. Now, burrows are quite simple to draw. You just simply click, bonk, and we're also going to then scroll up to this main layer up here where we're doing our farming and also put a burrow right there, maybe extend it right out to the end. Now, a burrow 
is essentially a zone that the dwarves will go to uh, in case of emergency that we can enable or disable at our will. So I can assign specific dwarves to this burrow if, say, you want to be really picky about locations that dwarves can travel, and we can enable um, and disable this burrow. So if we need, so in case of danger, when a problem happens, simply what we do here is we click on this button and we will assign all of our dwarves that we want to stay in this area to this burrow. Maybe we're settled somewhere dangerous where there's scary wild animals and the only dwarves we want to let go outside is the military. You might have to have a burrow up and running at all times. Currently, it's just gray langers though, so not a huge threat. But in the situation where things get hairy, we should lock the dwarves inside. And that's how we're going to do that in case of emergency. But... For right now, we're not going to worry about it so much because these things are still fine and dandy. We're still smoothing up these bedrooms, so it looks like I can now complete another bedroom. Let's just jump over here, grab furniture, bed, bunk, thunk, done. Let's also grab us another door. Once again, boom, thunk, done. That sound effect included. Then we are going to make this bedroom zone. We don't need to make a multi-bedroom. We can just do it with painting. And accept. We now have another bedroom. So, instead of sleeping there, once again, dwarves will access that side. Now, as you can see, our uh, food stockpile is slowly getting done. I would rather just finish it, so we're going to increase the priority ever so slightly. On, oh, no, from three to two uh, over here on this building, because I want you to do that one first there, dwarf. And uh, we also, you know, as important as a tavern is, I kind of just want to get our stockpiles done. So we're going to increase the priority of this over top of the rest of the tavern to just do this side first. Ooh, we've got some Jasper clusters. Gems. Nice. So they're going to continue working on that. Another tip that I would like to say about mining, I'm going to set this to lower priority so it happens even later, is we can set things to auto mine. So if we designate something to auto mine, we can uh, only designate ore and gems that are selected, or we can dig only gems. But if I set it to auto and I select a uh, material like this, when it comes time to mine this out, let's just increase the priority for sake of example. When it comes time to mine this out, the dwarf will mine all of it all at once instead of, you know, going from place to place. So now we we are... Oh, I just used old hotkeys. I guess old habits die hard. Hold on, where are we? Okay, so from here, we're going to click build. We're going to click constructions, and we are going to go funk and just... Eh, let's use the dolomite, which is the color of most of this wall around. So I will simply replace those gems that are currently on the floor with other materials. Once this is done being dug out, we can work on this. So let's get some more of these bedrooms filled out. Boom. Because I, for a second there, thought that we were hearing more combat sounds. Uh, I, You do want to have all of your, you know, your, your dwarves in beds, especially before um, other migrants arrive, which is going to be happening soon because we're into midsummer now. We're also going to select more doors. So beds, doors, check, cool. We've got our kitchen area, or what's going to be our kitchen area done. And now we just need to get these finished. Although we are going to continue brewing uh, beers and alcohol up on the upper layer up above us. Of course, we also have these cats and these dogs and this hunting dog around. And they're, they, they're, of course, doing their best. Um, we're going to take a real quick peek and see what everybody's up to. we got dwarves constructing stuff. Cool. Still got that dwarf making rock blocks. Awesome. One dwarf fishing, which actually means we should make a fishing uh, workshop because raw fish can't be eaten on their own. They're kind of disgusting. Who wants to eat a partially live, still flapping fish? So we got to make ourselves a fishery for all those fish that our dwarves are acquiring. And we're going to need to make a bigger space for a food stockpile here, I think. So let's, uh, let's, let's just continue what we were doing previously and uh, dig things out. Remember to disable uh, the auto mining feature if you turn that on like I had and then totally forgot to do. Otherwise, they will not be able to dig. Um, and we're going to give them a nice little entryway. So this is going to be where we're going to do our cooking and whatnot, and this is going to be where we're going to store the food. We still have some time before the rest of the stuff is done digging, so we're just going to fill that out a little bit. I, I like making sure that things are not too square. Squares are boring, you know? I know it's hip to be square, but I'm not super square, nor my hips, so I don't know the first thing about being square, in fact. Let's see. How many more bedrooms do we have ready? Quite a few. So once again, we're going to set them as multi and just go thunk and thunk. Now, the fancier you get with your bedrooms, the happier your dwarves will be with your bedrooms. So just kind of keep that in mind. We've now expanded upon this. So I'm going to jump over here into furniture and we're going to thunk, do the rest of this. And, uh, I, you know, even I might just kind of cancel that and go back over top of all of this. And we're just going to make all of this into a uh, 
pretty much everything stockpile. I think we're just going to allow everything, and let's just go and remove the things that we do not want in this stockpile, okay? So we do not want wood. We do not want stone, because that'll just fill it up immediately. And we do not want... Uh, bars and blocks we don't want. We just kind of want everything else. Ba uh, actually, maybe not gems. Gem gems would fill that stockpile up too quickly. We die. Actually, now that I see it. We also don't want corpses. <laughs> and we also don't want refuse and bits and pieces of corpses. Okay. So, perfect. We can now fill the rest of this stockpile up. We've updated the size of this stockpile. And it's going to grow pretty considerably in a short period of time as all of the dwarves run back upstairs to go grab piles of random crap to bring down into this stockpile. Flying upstairs, you see? More, more barrels. We're actually going to need to make some more barrels, I think. Let's uh, let's cancel this up, because we don't need to just be infinitely making more carts as we queued up previously. Always remember if you have jobs running on just repeating orders, because otherwise you will end up with way too many things. So let's go with barrel. And I also was going to queue up some mugs, so we'll do that as well. So wood in barrel. And we are going to queue up, let's just say, eh, actually, 100, right? We're also doing those rock blocks, which is great. But uh, I made crafts, so we're going to do rock mug. Now, this is made at the craft store shop. Once again, in this manager screen, you can, of course, go through the individual shops and just scroll by if you can't remember what something is called. But if we have all tasks, rock mug, let's grab make rock mug. Currently, it's set to 10 of 10. Now, remember, they do make more than one per job, so let's just say 15, because that'll be more than enough for my dwarves currently. Just so that they don't have to drink without using a goblet cup or mug, because that is an offensive thing to make a dwarf do, indeed. So now this is going to start getting brought down and dug out pretty quickly. And as you can see... Uh-oh, actually, I screwed up. I don't want food in this stockpile. I left food in that stockpile. My bad. All right, so remove food from that stockpile, because food's going to go over here. But everything else will come down here. <laughs> Oopsies. My bad. Nobody's perfect. We'll, we'll definitely move the food over there as it becomes available. Also, I changed my mind. I would like to bring my food in first, so let's finish up with this here stockpile. And checking our drink and plant, we, we are doing rather well. Although I may want to queue up some more drink pretty soon because dwarves always need drink. Drink is one of those things that I don't generally like to do this, but a lot of people really like to just simply... Um, was that a kangaroo was fighting? I think it was. Jeez. Um, I guess there's kangaroos on the surface. Actually, hold on a second. What is on the surface? Look, we've got kangaroo dough and a kangaroo buck. That's adorable. Anyway, as I was saying, um, you don't... I can actually, now that I'm thinking about it, completely lost my train of thought. Well, we'll get back to it. Anyway, we're expanding our food stockpile size, and uh, we're going to need to queue up more bedrooms in a little bit. So while they're digging out that, might as well uh, dig out more uh, bedrooms over here. We are also keeping an eye out on... Uh, for more migrants, and we're also keeping an eye out for traders, because uh, traders arrive just before the winter entombs us, and uh, migrants arrive around the same time. We've queued up a couple more beds. Still got these. Right, yes, I was going to make a hospital zone. So we're actually going to uh, remove this zone currently, and we're going to go down to a uh, meeting area. Now, meeting area is, once again, kind of the generic area, and we are going to accept this meeting area, and we are going to assign it as a hospital. Now, there's a couple things that we need for hospitals to make them super fancy. If we click on this expand icon, as you can see, you need to assign a chief medical dwarf to utilize a hospital properly. What I'm going to do is we are going to pop up the uh, nobles screen again, and we are going to assign a dwarf as a chief medical dwarf. Now, unfortunately, nobody here knows the first thing about bodies or how they work. Also, it looks like we just got a migrant wave. Perfect timing, uh, which means I can throw one of these fish keepers as uh, migrants. So it looks like we have acquired a few new migrants. And uh, here are they. You know, looks like they're all kind of running into the fort already. They're running over top of our, our little brook here, which, by the way, has a lovely little waterfall, which I didn't notice previously. Hmm. Glorious. Um, but anyway, we have nine dwarves now, so let's take a look at our new recruits. Uh, looks like uh, we, we, have a, we, we, of course, have our new chief medical dwarf who's off fishing. Um, if I jump over to their labors, by the way, you can actually get an immediate look at what they do. I'm going to remove them from fishing because I don't really want them fishing. I'm just going to kind of give them orderlies, so they'll just do general jobs around the place in case somebody desperately needs medical care, and at which point then they will dive in and do that sort of care. So now that we, again, have access to orderlies, I can go down here and we can select our hospital. And uh, now you can see this. 
So all visitors welcome is the default. I don't really want people visiting my hospital. Um, and uh, they will, by default, once there is a chest in the um, in the hospital, they will fill it up with all of the medical stuff needed. It's good to have, you know, your crutches and your bits and pieces close to you uh, when the... Uh, it's good to have all of this stuff close to your hospital when you uh, first uh, arrive in the hospital with an injury. You don't want to have your dwarves running across the fortress to go gather thread and cloth and splints to, like, fix a broken leg while it's spewing blood everywhere. That's kind of a bad deal. So what you want to do is you want to make a chest. So we're going to make a chest for this dwarf. I'm not going to bother going into the manager screen for this because we only need one. And rock chests are made at the stoneworker shop, and they're called coffers, which is basically just like a box with a lid on top. And there's this task here. It's this little exclamation point. We could pump up the priority, but I want them to do it now because I'm pretending to be Veronica's salt. So, no, Daddy, I want it now. Uh, we click the exclamation point, pushes it to the top, and pushes it out first. So it's now the first thing that's going to get done. So they're going to run away, run around real quick, and uh, grab a block for us, which I'm assuming is this dwarf right here. Oh, nope, you're making rock mugs. mugs. Well, Uh, They will real quick uh, run around until they locate the piece that they need. And there you are, I think. Yes. Uh, No, you're still making rock blocks. Well, once again, Philly. (laughs) Go. Oh, wait. Did you already make it? My God. You were fast. All right. So we are going to make that coffer because apparently I missed the whole process of the dwarf making it. And I'm going to go to chest, which gives us access to one coffer. And now... Uh, I can open up the zones screen again, and we can click on this, and we'll actually, over time, get to see them filling this stuff. As you can see, there is a chest in the common area now, so they will move the stuff that we have asked for into this room. Now, keep in mind, out of all of the stuff for hospitals, the only one that I point at immediately, and I'm like, that is mandatory. By the way, we need to assign this dwarf as a a doctor um, in this screen, so tell them to go be a doctor. Um... The only ones that are mandatory are thread, cloth, splints, and crutches. Soap and and powder for casks are optional, and you really want to have some buckets and a water source around. Eventually, you'd want to build a well close by just so that they can clean their wounds, because wounds need to be cleaned and are very, very uh, deadly if not cleaned, can cause infections and other sorts of terrible nastiness, which you just really don't want to think about. So now over here, we are going to throw down a, uh, another stockpile. We're going to accept that, and we're going to do what we did previously. But if you forgot, we're going to go to custom, we're going to go to food, we're going to say yes to everything, but no, big no, to seeds. Oops, nope. Yes to everything, select seeds, no to seeds. There we go. I'm still 100% cat getting it, coming to grips with this UI. Now, as we make this massive food stockpile over here, immediately I'm looking at it going, man, this tavern's looking kind of tiny. Let's let's expand this tavern. Can't have too much space for your tavern after all. And uh, we're also going to continue along with this uh, construction area down here. Although I'm going to make the extension of this hallway to be a little bit of a uh, lower priority job because it's not something that needs to be done right away it is something i would like to get done of course but um you know some more dwarves arrived so we need to go build um more of these bedrooms but even at this point if you've made it this far into this playthrough and you've been playing along you're more or less good to go you've got the basics down the only thing we haven't done yet is cooking we've got prepared fish dwarves eat raw food no problem we've got alcohol brewing up at the top Although not actively, but I can very easily queue up another round of beers uh, for the dwarves. And we have multiple stockpiles for multiple different types of resources. But we're just going to finish out our kitchen now. So we're going to go over to uh, farming. And then from farming, we are going to grab a butcher. Now, you might remember... It was, I clicked a still. Uh, now, you might remember that we have a hunting dog. Well, one of the more common jobs for dwarves as well is butchery. So we're going to need a place to butcher animals that get brought into the fortress. However, if food in the butcher shop is kind of left unattended and isn't put into a stockpile and a, and a barrel pretty quickly, it can rot. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're making butcher shops that you do need to make sure that you will be on top of keeping that food cared for. So we're going to build one of those real quick. And then the other thing that we're going to build right next to it, we're going to run out of space in here real quick. Uh, then another thing that we're going to build right next to it underneath the farming tab is a tanner so that when dwarves butcher animals, they can then bring the hides to be tanned. We don't need to put this in the kitchen, but I just kind of like to have them in the kitchen because it just keeps everything in that kind of section uh, like 
locked and loaded in my brain and I know where it is. Last thing we're going to do here is we're going to do a kitchen. Uh, and this is where we're going to start food and meals being made. Now, if you've made it this far, as soon as we've queued up some meals, you're basically a Dwarf Fortress expert at this point. <laughs> Quite literally. Like, this is all that you really need to know to play Dwarf Fortress. If you've made it this far and you're, and you're, and you're following along, like I said, we're going to queue up some more wood bear, wooden barrels. Let's queue up. A number of wooden barrels, let's say. Oh, geez, we've still got that job running. I thought I would have thought that that would have been done by now. But if you've made it this far, like I said, you, you're basically an expert and can probably complete just about anything that you'd need to complete in Dwarf Fortress. It's really not this big, nightmarish, endlessly complicated game that some people make it out to be. I think Dwarf Fortress actually gets a bit of a bad rap, and I'm really hoping that this version of the game kind of shows people who've been putting it off due to its previously terrifying graphical nature and previously super obtuse interface that, you know, version 5 of Dwarf Fortress, after a very close to 20 years, is suddenly a perfectly playable video game. Strange, hey? Ain't that fantastic. We're gonna have traders showing up soon. We finished those rock mugs, which is excellent. And uh, that was our migrants. Uh, we are getting close to late summer, so once the game saves next, we're going to be moving into fall, and that's when we're going to get our first trade caravan from the mountain home. Something else I would like to show you while we are waiting is this screen. Welcome to the world of Dwarf Fortress. Now, this is a very large and scary place. By default, it shows us a bunch of local sites and places. We can center on the fort, which is right here. This is us in the continent of defending the Dwarven Fortress of Blocked Bolted. The site government is the dignified basement. Glorious. And the civilization is, once again, the craft of sieges. All these blue locations are our friends, and all of these green locations are humans that we have an alliance with. And also, believe it or not, of all things, some dark Dwarven pits. These are once goblin pits that were taken over by the Great Clasps, or no, the Greatest Clasps, in fact, who we also have an alliance with. Over here, there's the dark human tower of Runcook. Very much important to keep an eye on and make sure that those do not discover us um, until absolutely necessary. Uh, there's also a human towel of crew loaves down here. So there are several different options that we can open up from here. There's news and rumors. And look at it, this. There's actually some activity going on. It appears that uh, in the early spring of the year 100, Doran clasped colored became the holy amber of the faith of Oiling. Must be some sort of religion. And replacing his nephew, Rimtar, City Controls. City Connection. It's a video game. Uh, and then it looks like in the early spring of the year 100, uh, Trade Snarl became the mayor of the Blade Banners of Confusing. Well, that's confusing. And in the early spring of the year 100, a group calling itself the Runners of Confusing founded Ray's Slang. So this is a group right here that moved down here and formed a new fortress. In fact, a hillix, which is a surface fortress, like hill dwarves. So, aside from the fact that they're right next to a pretty scary looking tower called, of the human tower of Runcook, as well as the dwarven tower of Roadsink, aside from them being the close range of zombies, some good news. It's nice to hear that our faction's expanding. We have some several other options here. Of course, we can look at other civilizations on the map. All the green ones are gonna be our friends. And then uh, gray ones don't know that we exist yet. But uh, there are, of course, some uh, less friendly people around as well. Uh, we can also go to uh, artifacts and take a look at famous materials that exist around the map that maybe we could go steal in the future, as well as reports and missions but and missing citizens. But those are all grayed out as we you know, haven't lost anybody on combat missions and we don't have any reports of combat missions and nobody's been kidnapped uh, yet. <laughs> this is still Dwarf Fortress, after all. A lot of things can happen and they can be entertaining and soul-crushing at the same time. So, looks like it's taking a little bit for our kitchen to get constructed, but that's okay. I'm sure our dwarves don't desperately uh, need to have uh, finished meals right now. Also, it looks like we're still bringing a lot of these mine carts. That's going to be our main uh, point of sale in this fortress. Let's jump up here, actually, and uh, see if that minecart job's still happening. No, it isn't, in fact. Also, we are starting to run low on wood. Well, I guess the elves haven't noticed us yet, so we might as well, uh, you know, do what you do when you run out of wood, which is um, make more wood. <laughs> so we're going to go chop down some more trees. Something else that's worth noting as well, 
because there are trees everywhere. Maybe we didn't want to get farming set up as quickly. We can set this job up, which is gather fruit. Uh, plant gathering zones are used in locations where plants will be gathered frequently. Use a gatherer designation otherwise. So we can either manually designate gathering these plants, or we could actually set up a gather zone, which I'm going to do. We're going to set it up kind of in this area right here. So dwarves can now come out here and they can gather uh, things that fall here. And we have several different options. Uh, we can gather fruit in trees uh, and um, stuff that is like, you know, just a, a layer up. So we can use step ladders, which we do have, and can make more of out of wood and other materials to gather fruit from trees. I'm going to disable that because sometimes dwarves have a nasty habit of getting stuck in trees. And it's not that the game used to lag a lot when they did that. They don't need more. But like if some, if you don't happen to have enough, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, step ladders. Uh, they do have this annoying habit of like a, another dwarf picks up the step ladder and runs away. And then first dwarf gets stuck in a tree and then they die. Um, so, and st because I haven't made more step ladders, we're going to disable that. In the future, if I make more step ladders, you can leave this on, but we're just going to remove it for right now. So we're going to have gather fruit and vegetables from shrubs. So that would be anything that's just naturally growing and then fallen fruit from trees. So I don't know what trees we have here, but we have ginkgo trees, willows, apricot. There's one that we've gathered fruit from. More willows, more willows, more willows. Yeah, it's a lot of willows, which is fine. We're going to take a real quick look. What is still in here? Okay, so we need a weapon stockpile because I'm still seeing a lot of maces and spears and stuff. And I'm also seeing our anvil and I'm seeing some pigtail cloth in there still. So we're just going to lie down here and I'm going to real quick make a couple more stockpiles. Um, I'm also building these over top of my current tavern, which, uh, well, not optimal, isn't the worst thing to do. We're just going to make it um, a weapons stockpile. I'm going to make this zone right here into our tavern now. I'm actually going to move it. So rather than making a new zone for the tavern, I'm just going to simply assign this zone over here to the tavern that we've already constructed. I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. So first, we've opened up the zone tools we've done so many times before. We're just going to quickly select the entirety of this tavern and click accept. We're going to make it a meeting area. A, a, a meeting area. Um, Oopsies, did I screw, screw that up? No, I didn't. Okay. So we're going to make it a meeting area. I, I don't know why it deselected itself. And we're going to give it the hel the location, the helm displace, which is our previous tavern. So now this is a uh, main tavern instead of that temporary one from before. And now just because it's the same tavern doesn't mean we can't remove, just because it's assigned to the same meeting area doesn't mean we can't remove parts of the zone. So I'm going to go remove that other zone up there. So this is now officially our tavern. As ugly and awful and unfinished as it is, at the very least, we have a tavern now uh, with enough space to dance in, which is definitely an improvement. And as soon as we can get some tables and chairs, I'm sure these dwarves will be ecstatic. So this whole area now is just going to start smoothing out and working on the tavern. We're getting up into late summer now. Time's getting up there as well. Putting time into this. Time just kind of passes in Dwarf Fortress. It's kind of a a little dangerous almost, actually. Like, there's definitely been times in the past where I've started playing... Oh, we got another cactus. There's definitely been times in Dwarf Fortress where I've started playing a fortress only to then realize that, oh, a lot of time has gone by. So something that's happening now, because we are in late summer is fruits and things are falling from these trees. So remember how we just set up that, that fruit gathering zone? Well, it looks like, looks like we've got walnuts, which the dwarves can gather. Looks like we've got ginkgo seeds, which I think are cookable. And as we move into fall, you're going to notice something that used to scare people a lot in Dwarf Fortress. The trees are going to start turning red. Previously, in ASCII, when it was kind of difficult to immediately identify something, people used to think it was raining blood. But, because... <laughs> We can now see things clearly at a glance without having to select them to look at what they are. We don't need to do that anymore. As soon as the game saves, we're going to move into fall. Now we're going to sit here and wait and wait and wait for saving. Dwarf Fortress will try and crash sometimes when it's saving. That's fine. It's never actually crashed during a save for me. At least not in a very, very, very long time. So now we've moved into early autumn. See if we can catch these trees changing color as autumn falls. Do, 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 Well, maybe I was a little bit optimistic. Oh, oh, oh. Seeing colors changing. Look at this. 
especially on the lower layers. You can see down here, uh, the berries are starting to get rot away or get picked up. I was really hoping that we could just see this up there. Maybe I'm actually seeing animals. Yeah, I'm seeing the animals moving around in the background. I'm not actually seeing the trees changing color. The thing is, I know that the second I go underground, stuff's going to start changing color, and I'm going to then feel like a big dummy for not actually seeing them as they change color. Uh, well, <laughs> I guess I, I will simply stop making myself look silly. Let's check on the progress of the tavern. The nice thing about Dwarf Fortress, though, or a nice thing about Dwarf Fortress, is it's quite a slow game, too. You don't need to worry about being 100% on all the time. You can take breaks and calm down and just be chill, especially in a fortress like this, where there isn't immediate threats around. If, you know, we're in a haunted biome where there is gases that pass across the map and cause dwarves to turn into paste, there we go. Uh, you will slowly... Um, well, you, you will have to be a lot more paying attention, but because this is a pretty calm embark, and, you know, it is wilderness, there are monkeys, uh, it's not the most threatening place for us in the world, uh, we are able to look and gaze upon the glory that are these trees. Look at them. They're, go they're gorgeous. Eventually they'll turn red, and then all the leaves will fall onto the ground. Hopefully that gives you a little idea of the beautiful colors that Dwarf Fortress can provide. Thank you very much for watching this episode of this beginner Let's Play tutorial series. If you want to see more of these, this is episode three. If you missed the other two, I recommend going back and watching those. If you want to see more stuff by me, there's more Dwarf Fortress on this YouTube channel than you could reasonably watch in a lifetime. And if you want to see my face while I play video games on Twitch, you can find me at twitch.tv slash blindirl. In the next episode, we'll tackle trading, at the very least, probably more as well. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.